I came to Jesus, weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away, took my sins away. Now his love made my heart so glad. He took my sins away. Well, I don't see with these lists that somebody gave me off this yet. And by the way, hopefully within a month, they're about, if it ain't this month, maybe next month, we're going to have a streamcast live on the YouTube, on the internet. And uh, i got to get a better microphone. i got to get a camera that will plug into the computer. And uh, a little thing behind me is a backdrop. And uh, once I get everything set up where we can do this, right now I, I see this this month so far I've gained four subscribers and YouTube requires you to have at least 100. Right now we've got 156 that view our website, our, our YouTube site, and uh, uh, we've got a hundred and something messages, video messages posted on there, uh, what we teach and preach. And uh, I said I want to do this because on Facebook and discussing with a lot of these people, like this guy here posts this, uh, he made a list of stuff, and you can find it. All you got to do is look. You can find anything negative if you want to look for it that, about God's laws, you know, because you're misinformation, uh, not understanding, not having the revelation of it, what's going on. And Peter even said Paul's writings are hard to be understood. So you're not just going to jump in here and open that up and say, oh, I understand it. Peter said it's hard to understand. So you're not going to do it like that. And anybody trying to do it like that, you miss it. Most of them missed it. Most oneness and trinity both are missing this. You know. And I do remember Jesus Christ told me the day I received the Holy Ghost. You don't understand now, but you will. I've got something I want you to do. They won't let me preach in their churches. He gave me a place where I can, where I can be heard and seen worldwide. It goes anywhere in the whole world, the United States, or overseas as well. I'm going to advertise it. And uh, I do know they can't gain say it. And I noticed that even on Facebook, you don't get any of the local ministers wanting to talk to me about it. I thought one of the ones I found even close to it was Eastern, Eastern West Baptist ministers. And uh, what they had to say was just what they believed. They had no scripture for what they were saying. And they misused some of them, so I didn't mind just doing another tackle of that. Uh, it's not being self-righteous if Jesus Christ gives you... He told me not to fear their faces. What do you think he's telling me not to do? And... Uh, he also told me I would understand this. And uh, just within the last two or three years, this thing about the law has begun to come very obvious and so plain. Why I missed it. I'm 66, got in church at 22, and on the scene that's within the last five years. Mainly because I never asked. I never asked. I took everybody else's word for it, for what they were saying. And uh, so anyway, I get to go live. I can go, uh, uh, like I said, when you're on Facebook, you've you you got to type everything you say. And somebody asks you a dumb question, you, you might take that much just to give an explanation. And you, know, you don't want to be there that long. So going live, they can ask questions on the side. And if I want to deal with their question, I can. I, I don't have to, but I want to. You know, I may have my own agenda laid out. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm expecting eventually to have more subscribers. And uh, because I eventually believe that he's fixing to open this up to whoever he wants. Now, I, look, I already told them on there. Jesus showed me about 3 to 5% of oneness are going to absolutely see this. That's it. So when they tell me they don't, they don't agree with it, I said, y'all ain't bothering me about one bit. He just showed me most of y'all ain't going to see it anyway, so you know, they ain't going to bother and I said, but what would bother me if all of you did say you're saying it? Then I'd have a problem. That never means something missed. And uh, so, be praying about that. And uh, we're, we're going to go through a lot of stuff. I'm going to start out with my testimony. And uh, I'm going to lightly mention every night vision I've ever had. I had to write some of them down. forgot some of them almost. And... Uh, those were, a lot of them were confirmations, events. 
So anyway, we wanted to hear about the anti-law statement. This was number 11 on this man's list. And here his statement is, the law is weak. And he gave Romans 8, 2, and 3. Which that's a true statement, but the way he's using it, he's trying to say, we don't have nothing to do with the law no more. See? And uh, that's contradictory to Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. And Paul said, do we make void the law through faith? He said, God forbid. We establish the law. And how we establish the law is by honoring that law. Jesus came to make the law honorable. That's what Isaiah the prophet did. God said, Isaiah, write this down. Now, he made the law honorable. Your carnal mind, if anybody has a carnal mind, it's not subject to the law of God. So I'll tell you right there, there's the law of God. And why a lot of folks keep missing this over and over and over is not comprehending about the Sinai covenant and what it was for. So, let's go ahead and look at some of this right here. Romans 8, 2 and 3. Here's the, the scripture. Stuff. Romans 8, 2 and 3. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now they'll jump out on that. I see right there, we don't worry about that no more. They're not even catching what he's writing. Let's go ahead and read your next statement. For what the law could not do, and then it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So that's the scripture text he uses to make that comment that the law is weak. That means that we're, we're, and they don't need looking, looking at that because that don't mean nothing no more. That's, that's his basic concept. And that's most of them in this town's concept of that. The law stated in that verse is in reference to the Sinai covenant. Now the question here next is what is the law of sin and death? What is that law? Verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So what is this law of sin and death? Now we know the law of gravity. If you uh, get on top of one of the big old high buildings somewhere and jump off of it, you're not going to defy that law that God's put in motion in physics. You're going to spider the ground below there is a law of sin and death. You might know, consider it about what that law is when it tells you that the wages of sin is what? Death. The wages of sin is death. That's a law. If you commit sin, you're worthy of death. I know everybody says, how are we going to get out of this? Because here's the thing. Let me re-quote some of that again. Think about it. God did not intend on any human to sin. Before Adam was made, or when Adam, before Adam was made, God knows in what we call His laws. Now, nobody on earth is doing it because Adam had been created. Okay? But he don't like adultery. He don't like fornication. He don't like murder. He don't like stealing. He don't like lying. All of a sudden, here comes humanity on the stage and Satan jumps right in there with one thing. I'm going to get him to sin. And he done. Now God don't like that. God don't like humanity sinning. So he's got a plan now to redeem us. He put Adam out of the garden. Remember this one, very important. Lest he partake of the true life and live forever with sin. So God would not let Adam be in sin and partake of that tree of life and live forever. And friend, if he put him out, he's not going to let you back in until you have eliminated that sin. 
Now I know that false concept is well, Jesus died and shed his blood, and it don't matter, we can see it every day. He takes all we took care of. That is false. That's not what's going on. That's not what's happening. Through Christ, what do we do in that? I do know it says in John's writing that if we're in, in Him, there is no sin in Him. Right? And uh, I mean, there's all kinds of scriptures from John's writing, Paul's writings. Uh, if, if, should we continue in sin? And Paul said, God forbid. You know. Paul even said, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because we were made, and Paul wrote it, we're made subject to vanity. We're subject to doing stupid stuff if we give to it. But very next, after the comma, Paul said, but not willingly. God don't will that. God's expecting us to see the mistake and start lining up. And I use that woman that got stolen about every time, I guess, because that's the best one I found out in there anyway. By the law of the Sinai covenant, she should be stoned to death. Jesus brings in grace and mercy. Not because He's going to let her by with it. Not because she can go out and live in sin and keep doing that same old thing and say, oh, I'm saved by the grace of Jesus. No, what Jesus told her to do, go and sin no more. You should, in other words, He could have said, you should be stoned to death by the by the letter of the Sinai covenant. I'm going to give you a break. You go back, you leave here, you go back out there, you owe me something. You quit that sin. And that means any sin. Paul said, lay aside every weight of sin. As I said before, there is a real fine line of ignorance and rebellion. To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it's sin. If you're ignorant of something, the Lord's going to have mercy on the day of judgment. He knows how you're progressing, or if you're striving to overcome, or whether you know better than good anyway. See, that's where the danger's at. Remember that man in Corinthians committed fornication with his uh, own daddy's wife? They can kick him out of the church. Get ready to, or they didn't do it. What did Paul say in 2 Corinthians though? The man repented. The man told sorry. And he, with that repentance, I, I promise you, I'm not going to do any of that stuff again. Paul said, receive them. You receive them. That's why he said you can't judge after your, your eyes and, and keep on judging and condemning somebody that got caught in some kind of sin. If they straighten it up, Jesus will forgive that person. You see? That's the grace and mercy. They should be stoned by the letter of the law. But you can't keep breaking His laws. Now willingly, there remains no more sacrifice. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, everybody on the whole sun has come short of the glory of God except Jesus of Nazareth. When He said He'd come in the world, He said, I come to do Thy will, O God. And, and we say so many times, and I thank that other brother for enlightening me on that, Jesus had a body and a soul and a spirit. we got a body and soul and spirit. But when Jesus came, He came to do the will of God. The whole intent from the little baby on up. Maybe because God said and He woke him every morning. He was with him all the time. He was raising him up. Isaiah said, God said, I'll hold your hand. I'll keep you. I'll protect you. I'm not going I'm I'm to hurt you. But Jesus Himself had to make decisions. He had to increase in favor with God. He had to learn obedience by things he suffered. And then finally, he got everything together. Everything. Then God came down and manifested through him. 
And Jesus came along and said, Now come follow me. He condemned sin in the flesh. Not God. A man called Jesus of Nazareth condemned sin in the flesh. While he is as human as we are, he told the Pharisees, If I had come, you'd have had a cloak for your sins. An excuse. That's what everybody's got right now around us. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't live like Jesus because we, you ain't God. That revelation has messed more people up right there on the truth. A false revelation about Jesus. But Jesus was obedient. said, I always do the things that please Him. He came to make the law of God honorable to show humanity mainly that He told the Pharisees, if I hadn't come, he said, but now I am obeying my Father. I always do the things that please Him. I'm walking in all of His commandments. I'm not missing it. So you cannot write that excuse that you cannot walk in the law of God. This new covenant, if we follow through in obedience, we can overcome all of this and find the very favor of God just like Jesus did. See, we're coming out of the cesspool of sin. Jesus said I was in that cesspool. We keep our eyes on Him and we follow His pattern. The wages of sin is death. It's still death today. But it's through Jesus Christ that we get our deliverance. Is it blessing for me? Oh, all souls are mine, God said. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. What did God say here? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, I, I've got the scripture in here somewhere, but I'll hit it ahead of time. Even in the sign I come to Paul said they had the gospel. Preached to them back then. You know why? You know what it was? When God gave the law of Mount Sinai, thou shalt not, or thou shalt do this, or thou shalt not do this. They had the gospel. Here's what we got to do to please God. Here's what we got to do to have the blessings of God. And if you don't do this, here's the curses. You're on the 28. Remember when Israel come along, they tried to curse Israel. They were walking in the commandments at that time. Moses leading the whole nation. They weren't breaking those commandments of God. They were marching through the land and they tried to get them, Balaam cursed. Three times God met Balaam and went out there and prophesied blessings. Then on the side, Balaam talked to Barak. Private. Said, you're not going to get these people cursed until you get them to break the commandments. If you get them to do that, it's automatic. It's put on auto. auto. It's auto. It'll happen. Wages of sin is death. You get them to sin, God will get them. Ain't that what happened? They got to commit adultery, fornication, worshiping a golden calf, bowing down to fighting gods. Next thing you know, God's mad at the ones he was just blessing last week. Killed at least, I know one place said 24,000, another place said 40,000 died until uh, that priest grabbed it, sat in that tent, while the rest of the good Israelite folks are crying over it. And that <clears throat> one priest grabbed a javelin, one of them old long things got spear on it. Guess what it is? And he seen this Israelite bring this old Midianite or uh, uh, pagan woman into his tent and that done it right there with him and, 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 and people were dying he grabs that jab and up, runs in there and stabs both of them and kills them literally a priest of God takes a spear and stabs him and stabs her until they are dead walks out of the tent I don't know if he took the stain of blood all over and throwed it down or not but God told Moses this man has done, well, has done a favor he said, this man will always have his children. He's always going to stand before me. Never am I going to eliminate that family. So somewhere on this planet today, that man's family lineage is still alive on this planet. God promised. 
just for that. And when he done that, that death that was coming across our earth, thousands were dying. All of a sudden, God stopped. God don't like sin. And anybody thinks you can keep violating the laws of God and committing sin? What is sin? Transgression of the law. Paul said we don't make void the law of God through faith. We establish that. Do you realize if there were no state troopers, how many would actually go fix a fire? Or even on the, on the, on the interstate, how many would, would go 70? Because I think it's 70 on there. How many would really go? I well, might be some, like me, that don't want to drive that fast. But there's some out there that would open it up as fast as their car would get. If there were no state troopers, if they weren't worried about nothing like that, man, that'd be people just flying down them roads. But that law could still be saying, you still got to go send me. But what they want to say to You see, that's a truth that puts up. It makes you keep your eyes open. They've got that little box over there. Take it. <laughs> Put you in check. Faith will have you to walk the laws of God. And Paul said back then, and son, I come and they had the gospel. They had the truth that they just do it. But they didn't have faith. Let me say it again. Even a poor person have ten sheep. Something he wanted to do bad enough that was in violation of the law. Now looking at it on just a flat, not faith side, no faith. You see what we're saying? Faith tells us we want to obey God. We want to please God. We want to walk in the laws of God. We want to be subject to Him. Faith says that. Faith says, I want to please you, Lord. But so those people that didn't have faith, all they could see is just that natural side. They could, the guy had ten sheep out there, the pastor, he only had sacrificed one for a certain sin. He thought, well, shoot, I go ahead and do that. That ain't trying to please God. He's just looking, well, I've got ten, I'll have nine, and, and two of them people have another sheep. So I'll have eleven next year. No big deal. That's no faith. The sacrifices of those animals was for the purpose to let you know that atoned for that sin you've done. But you don't go back out there and say, well, anyway, what? I'm, I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. I ain't worried about it. I got, I got enough covered. That's no faith. People would treat the Holy Ghost the same way our day. Oh, I think I keep breaking Sabbath. It don't mean nothing no more. It does, too. You go look and see what God said about breaking Sabbath. Put in there with murder and uh, dark. Death penalty. You can be put to death for breaking Sabbath. You can be put to death for adultery. You can be put to death for murder. And probably some other stuff. It's put in there with them. It's a commandment. Almighty God spoke it from Mount Sinai. Ten commandments. And one of them, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. What do you churches right here do? Really? They've been brainwashed into believing it don't mean nothing. No faith. Not what counts. Willfully. Some of them know better. Some of them heard enough truth about it and rebelled. But some of them didn't know the difference. You know, like when I first got to church. That's what he gives us time. I know I tried to prove it wrong. When I turned my attention to prove it wrong, God said, well, we've got to have everything go. And the more I looked and looked and looked and looked, I said, I said, don't go. I said, this looks real. I said, it's going to be during the millennium. It's going to be uh, after Christ has returned. And then it, it was before. And God said he hated people breaking it. I said, that God, and it says he don't change. But I listened to people that misuse Isaiah, what, 28? This is the rest and we'll call it the weary to rest. And then they'll misquote Hebrews 4 a big time. They won't quote the scriptures they need that quote. They'll skip them. They'll go that one I think what was in the verse, not been verse 3. Uh, we that believe do enter that rest. Well, think about it. We that believe, we do enter that rest. 
but not now. And Paul said the same thing in verse uh, 1 and 2 and also in verse 11. That we didn't enter it down. That's talking about a time when we're glorified and we know how our bodies are subject to the needing that type of rest. We're glorified. Well, let's go. Romans 6, 1 through 12, Paul said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! Well, I don't believe that around here, though. Paul said, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, sin is transgressing the law. How can you, if you're dead to sin, how can you be out there performing sin? It ain't because Jesus' blood covers his stuff. No, no, it ain't just that. When he, you know what this, you know what Acts 2 that repentance, baptism, Holy Ghost, singing about. When you repent of your sins at that point in your life, you're talking about your history past, all the way to your birth. What, whatever your first sin was, all the way to where you are right now. You're not covering the future. You're covering your historic past. You're repenting of your sins. You're baptized. Those sins are remitted, done away with, but not the future. He gives you the Holy Ghost, gives you power to overcome sin. Now, you're going to sin initially when you first get the Holy Ghost because you've got to learn, you've got to grow. And that's why a lot of them completely get off track about this doctrine subject here. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. I mean, somebody's going to sin. Jesus said, there are 30, there are 60, there's a hundredfold. There's a difference. But he did not say you can go willfully sin. And Paul said right here, shall we continue in sin? That grace abound. And he says, God forbid. In other words, no, you can't continue in sin. You can't continue. And that's transgressing the law. You can't keep transgressing the laws of God. How shall we that are dead live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In other words, with the intent, we're not going to sin. We're not going to break the commandments of God and the laws of God. That's what it's about. If we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. That old man that done all of those sins. If he got drunk, he ain't going to be trying to get drunk. If he's cussing, he's going to stop it. If he's living a low grade life, he's going to stop it. The old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. <clears throat> That henceforth, this heart, right now, from right now on, Acts 2.38, this God, from right here on forward, we should not serve sin. Sin is the transgression of God's law. From now on, we do not break God's law. If you do, and you continue to live in there, you're going to be called out and destroyed. Remember Matthew 13, 41? When Jesus Christ mentioned about those fish caught in that net, He's going to take the ones that cause sin. He's going to take those that are breaking His laws, and they're going to be rejected. Just like bad fish. 
And that's been some folk got the Holy Ghost. Why do you think Jesus said, Me will come to me in that day? So, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I spoke in tongues. I've done some kind of works before from time to time. We've had a miracle. We shouted in church over it. And now I'm not accepted. You know why? You've got the wrong doctrine. Peter said, Misunderstanding Paul's writings will cause your destruction. You reread it sometime. It will cause your destruction. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now I'm going to tell you, you ain't free from sin if you commit the sin. No, you ain't made it yet to that spot. If you're dead, you're free from sin. That's why prayer and fasting comes in there. See, some demon spirits are compulsive. They will entice you. They will hound you. They will do everything under the sun. They will, they, listen, it's just like a guy going to rob a bank. He'll case the place over to learn all the details. Learn where's the weak spot. Where can I get in at? Have they got cameras? Can I get in at a certain time and get out? Can we take care of the night walking? Can we do this? All crooks will operate like that. So does Lucifer and his demons on Christians. They will chase you. They will watch you from the time you get up all through the day because they're just as real here as they've ever been. And they will watch your routine. Where can they get you? I'm, I'm sure most can't get them in church. Most can That's not a good spot for an attack. You're ambushed when you get out there in that world. When something is sinful, something's wrong, he'll entice you, he'll use your friends, he'll use your kinfolk. Why don't y'all come over here and do this on the side? Huh? Boy, it sounds so easy, don't it? You can't go and buy something, you can't go to Lake and eat at uh, what you call the places down there on the side. I don't care if your whole mom and daddy and all your kid folks from even Timbuktu come over and say, Well, come out and join us. Is it the Sabbath? Well, you know how it is. Uh, uh, we're not, uh, man, not made for the Sabbath. No, that's the way, wrong way of using that. If God said don't do it, you don't do it. You'll be a light. You don't take a bushel and cover your light up. See, you don't know how this going. You let your light shine when you show them this is a sign of the Lord our God and He said we're not to go out there and do all this pleasure stuff on His day. I, I'm sorry, I can't go out the yard sale with you today. I can't go to your bake sales at your church today. It's sin. So call it what it is. It's S-I-N. When any church in this town has a bake sale or a rummage sale or a yard sale on their property on the side of the day, matter of fact, it may be wrong on any day for a church to do that. <clears throat> I'm reading they're doing that trying to get money without having to cough up some from their own personal accounts. Most of them. That's the whole thing about it. When you bring something to the house of the Lord, God said He likes a willing for mine, willing uh, offering from you. Not go sell something, hop something, get something, somebody else's money. Here, here, I give it to you, God. Remember that in Samuel's day? Saul, Saul brought it back. We come, we gonna give this to God. God was never almost ready to kill him for it. He said, you spoke to baby, come at me. I told you to kill every one of them. Yeah, well, we saved them. We just took it up on ourselves. We know what your word said, but we believe that you would love me even though I'm violating what you told me. It's a good intention behind it. God told him to kill the Amalekites, didn't he? Kill the men. Kill the women, kill the children, kill the sheep, kill the cattle, everything, burn her house down, destroy it. Here comes Saul back. They said, Well, these women had no men, so we're going to let them marry in some amongst us. That's okay. Ain't God? Yeah, that's okay. They didn't listen. Samuel said, What's that bleeding out here? I hear some sheep over there. Well, God's word said kill them. They disobeyed. God said he don't like that. He wants obedience. 
You want to partake of the tree of life, you better outdo Adam. Now God kicked him out. Why would he let you back in to partake of it if you're not going to straighten your life up and walk the laws of God? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with Him. If we did, we don't sin. If we be dead with Christ, He that is dead is free from sin. You don't commit sin if you're free. And so, some of us may be still trying to kill ourselves. You know. Spiritually. In that sense of the word. We've got to crucify the old man. Maybe we ain't went to the cross proper yet. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with Him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more, death has no more dominion over Him. For that He died, He died in the sin once. But in that He lives, talk about Jesus, He lives unto God. He could have sinned while he's here in human body. He was tempted in all points, just like me and you. Yet, he would not do it. He was trying to be enticed in so many ways and would not yield. And God raised him from the dead. Now he's he got that going by body. He ain't subject to this stuff like we are. We're trying to get, get what he got. Some folks got the Holy Ghost are going to miss it because they're in rebellion and they're rebellion because they've got a pastor that ain't teaching them the truth. They're deceiving the elect if possible. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed of the sin. Again, I'll say it. As long as you commit sin, you ain't dead to it. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let it rule your mortal body. Don't let it tell you to do something you know better than the Word of God tell you not to do. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That ain't changed. I don't care what they say. That ain't changed. And the thing is, I, I go on Facebook and make statements like that and won't none of them come back and give a good dialogue on it. They'll go off, I'll call it rabbit hunting. They'll go off on a tangent on something else. I've got one guy on there from somewhere. We start talking to post a scripture text like this and he get off on the God here. I said, that's got to be one of this person. There ain't no doubt about it in my mind. That's got, that's got it in their brain. they got to do that. It's got to be one of You know, that's what that drives them. I love to get on that sometimes. I said, this is not the post for it. They go right it up. They'll start down on this trail of a post about the Sabbath or whatever it's about, and they'll get way off over here on a tangent on something else. We have to get off on about Jesus coming in 70 AD. Stuff like that. He probably admitted he wasn't talking about his liberal coming back then. I said, well, he didn't even come then at all. I mean, God, God knew that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. But uh, the, Jesus didn't come back to it. He just let the Romans, he just took his hands off of them and let the Romans do what they do best, kill and murder. Don't let sin reign in your moral body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Here's a good one. Hebrews 7, 18, 19. For there is very a disannulling of the commandment. Now look down the bottom where I've got it. Uh, a statement there. The commandment is in reference to the Sinai covenant. There is very a disannulling of the commandment, the Sinai covenant. Now here's why. We just mentioned a whole lot that long ago about the woman going to be stoned by the letter of that law. She should be stoned to death. But she's not. Grace and mercy. But it doesn't mean God done away with thou shalt not commit adultery. See? And this is what this is about. There's a disannulling of that commandment, and now most folks will use that and say, well, the, the commandment wasn't no good. Do you think God would give something that wasn't no good? 
I mean, Paul said in Romans that the law is good, it's righteous, it's holy. Didn't he? Sure did. But Paul said there is a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness. <laughs> now the commandment, the sign of that covenant was weak, but not, it wasn't God's fault. That's where they're not getting it. It wasn't their fault. We just mentioned it. We're going to give you a scripture before we close this thing out. The fault was lack of faith. They didn't have faith. There's a disannulling of the commandment or the sign I covered what you're after here. Going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof, for the law made nothing perfect. The sign I covenant exposed sin, but did not get rid of sin. Did it? Did I get rid of it? What was sin? What was the purpose of sign I covenant? Let me say it over and over and over. Do y'all catch up if you can't call it? From Adam to Moses, they're sinning. They have no idea what sin is. They don't know where thou shalt or shalt not. They don't know that because they done that. But in God's eyes, they're sinning. So God says, I'm going to give a sign of thy covenant. Here it tells you, thou shalt do this or thou shalt not do this. Now y'all can see now, all of a sudden it's exposed. Now you know what sin is. Now I will give you the sacrificial laws to deal with atonement of it. I'm going to give you penalty laws to punish those that keep from doing it. The law wasn't perfect. They didn't use faith. They didn't use faith when they do the sacrifices. When a guy got 35 strikes, he done something that brought on 30 strikes. Say. They're different degrees. Somebody done a sin, they had to go out there in front of everybody and preach and all that and get 30 something strikes on their back. Oh, that hurt. Man, that hurt. But he can say, I'm tough. What I done, I want to do it again tomorrow. I may get caught. If I don't get caught, well, I'm good. If they don't catch me, I keep doing it. But if I get if I get these shots, I paid it. It's paid. I paid the penalty. I just took the beating. <laughs> like that guy off that sheep. I told her, I got it covered. I got it made. I'll, I'll have time to have more sheep <laughs> next year. No faith. The whole intent was God to show His people, here's what I want you to do, here's what I don't want you to do, and if you will use faith and you love God, I'm not going to do what you said not do. I'm going to do what you said to do. I'm going to obey your laws. That's the part that still goes on today that ain't changed. Your carnal mind is not subject to God's laws. But they're teaching their people it don't matter no more than whatever you want to do. You're okay, the blood's coming. They are looking at that wrong. It's going to cost some of them. The law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. If it makes you perfect, it gets sin out of your life. It's Daniel 9, 25, I think, maybe 7. It will finish the transgression. It will make an end of sin. It will bring in everlasting righteousness. God has accomplished what He set out to do through the human race. Many will try and not be able because they're being deceived by folks telling them they don't matter about the law no more. And Peter said they're bringing on destruction to themselves by in rebellion. Hebrews 4 2. Notice this. Now, when Paul is doing the right their statements, when he says, let us, he's talking about himself included, right? I mean, that's just common sense. He ain't talking about sinners out there on the street. He's writing this to a church location. When he said us, he's talking about all of us. If he was in here, he'd be talking about all of us. Let us therefore fear. Well, brother, up, why should we fear? We're saved. You know they take that attitude. It don't matter what you do. Like that guy in fact told me one time he cussed like a sailor. Work not worse than some sailors. And then told me, he said, I saved back in so many years ago. 
And he used so many four letter words. I'm not going to tell you any of them. But he said some bad ones all the time. So he wasn't fearing. Yet the Bible tells us to fear. Christian folks, it's in the church, it's got the Holy Ghost. Let us fear. Bless the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Does that show you that we don't enter because we got Acts 238? How plain is that? Anybody see this on YouTube? I know somebody will watch it. How plain is that? Let us fear lest the promise being left us of entering his rest. And you're telling your people that you entered because you got the Holy Ghost spoken in tongues. That's false. That's deception. You make them think everything's hunking over okay. When Jesus said in Matthew 13, 41, you call sin or you break his laws, you're going to be rejected and thrown aside as a bad fish. <laughs> many shall come in my name, Jesus said, saying I'm the Christ, and deceive many. Let us fear, lest the promise being left us of entering in his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Oh, not those of the sign I come. But the word preached did not profit them. You might know why? Huh? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see, there were those in Israel that loved God enough that if He said do it, do it. If He said don't do it, don't do it. They loved God. But there were other Israelites, just like I said a while ago, and Jesus uh, God in Isaiah 1, Amos 5, let blasted them, what were they doing? They would come to every feast day. They would come to every Sabbath. They would walk in there like, well, we, we, we're right. We're holy. And breaking his laws. And sinning like it didn't matter. And God said, he, I said, I'm sick of your feast days. God wouldn't put it down his holy day. Now, don't you, you people been deceived on that? And they told that by false preachers been told that to their people. He was lamb blasting Israel for living in that low grade sin, coming in before him on every holy day and Sabbath, and saying, I'm not here, Lord. God said that it, it makes it stinks to him. Said the name the same way. When we come before the Lord on His holy days and feast day, we should have the intent we come for pure love that we want to do what He said. And to do that, you've got to kick out your pagan days. I know I love, I've heard hurts a lot of boys. I ain't going to pull a tooth without medicine. As you give up Christmas, Easter, Halloween, and Valentine's, or whatever else falls in that category. You ever try to pull a tooth and not have medication? You ever had a tooth hurting so bad you just feel like you can't go back to and yank it out? Been hurt so bad, I have. But I'll tell you what, you'll back off after you feel that pain. You can take that flyer and put there and break you fixing and yank it loose and it hurts worse than it did when it was hurt. And you won't do it. Very few would do it. There might be some old enough to do it. But you won't. Now that's the way it is. When people give up their pagan holidays, they'd rather not come here and go to church and pat them on the back for it. That's why a lot of them won't come here. The church I started at one time was head over heels in the Christmas. What they said tomorrow. At one time they backed off from it just a little bit. When we start speaking against it, you come find out Pastor going up to the state of Kentucky and with his family partaking of it. Next thing you know, after we left, they drifted right back and more bullheaded than they ever was before about this here Christmas. You can see them on Facebook posting stuff. Uh, that if it's Valentine's, they'll post a little heart thing. If it's Christmas, they'll post stuff about Christmas. If it's whatever else, they'll never post about God's holy days written in your Bible or my Bible. And most of them won't even talk Acts 2.38 that's got it. 
Now that's a disgrace. Oh, I'm afraid I'll make a Baptist man. Well, who needs to hear it? <laughs> I tell you what, I don't go in there and call them. When I mean, they get mad, they just have to get mad. I, God didn't call me to, to make them feel good. That's the last thing He wanted me to do for them, trying to make them feel good. <clears throat> Not tell them the truth. They didn't have faith in the Old Testament days. We call it Sinai Covenant days. Law of law to God is just as real as it was before Adam. Between Adam and Moses, from the Sinai Covenant to Christ, and from Christ to the very end of this thing, the laws of God don't change. Not those laws. 1 John 3, 6. In Jesus Christ, you have the faith and the power to stop sinning. Look at 1 John 3, 6. No one, now John the Apostle wrote this. We talk about Apostles' doctrine. They talk about Apostles' doctrine. No one who abides in Him, in Jesus Christ, keeps on sinning. You don't keep transgressing. You don't keep breaking the laws of God if you abide in Jesus Christ. If you do, you're not abiding in Him. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. But Brother Duff, I got the Holy Ghost. You still ain't got to know Him yet. He gave you power to become a son of God and you're going away of Rome. You're going away of the whore and the heart of church system. There you remain. If you think you are, you better, you better do something. You better walk out that door and go somewhere where they're preaching truth. I know we got to hear on the truth part. Now, in personal life, we got to try to line up and all that. That's, that's a different thing. But this truth, they're breaking these laws of God right and left all over this town thinking they're saved. And that ain't being self-righteous. I can, we can go to Scripture on any of them or we go to it. I know what Jesus showed me. <clears throat> A lot of people here. <laughs> <laughs> 